from the Raycast example, back to our MPC. And before I move on, I just want to show quickly why I'm developing a rigid body character controller for our MPC. If I quickly create a prefab of him, I'm going to open a new scene. I'm going to save changes there. I'm going to drag in my terrain. Add a directional light. I'm going to drag in that MPC prefab. I'm going to drag in that player prefab also as a target. Remember to assign the target to the MPC. And then just check he isn't colliding with anything. Now while I mentioned colliding, we note this time our floor is named terrain. Now let's quickly look at that MPC movement script. And we have a variable that is grounded that affects whether he decides to move or not. And in our collision checks, we're checking if our floor is named floor. Now in this scenario, I'm using my terrain. So I'm going to modify this script right now. So it's going to be flexible across my two different examples. So now quite simply, on our collision, we're checking if the object is named floor or terrain. We're going to set the ground. And I can just simply add this to our other collision checks. So now we can have our ground named floor. We can have it named terrain. Now the point of the rigid body character controller is for this purpose. What's for terrain and in a 3D environment? As you can see, with the gravity in the controller is working quite happily across that terrain there. Okay, so it's not a matter of transform position in his forward where he starts walking through the terrain like he walked through the walls. There you can see he's quite happily operating along the surface of the terrain. That's why I'm developing it like this. Okay, let's even save that scene. And this is still our prototyping MPC, but this time it's on the terrain. So this one, let's just rename that to floor. So I have a 2D scene and I have a 3D scene in which to test our MPC character out. Okay, so back to prototyping in a nice, clear, simple environment. Okay, so where do we leave our MPC off? We hit play. He does turn. He rotates to face the player. And then he moves in his forwards in the direction of the player. Or in his forward while he's turning to face the player. As we come to an obstacle, he is indeed colliding with the obstacle and stopping. But now we need to work a work in a simple way that he can try and walk around that obstacle by himself. Just make him a little bit free thinking. Okay, so for the next bit, as a disclaimer, what I'm going to show you now I didn't learn or adapt myself. This is something I learnt from this tutorial. So here's the URL. And much shorter tutorials than mine. Quite welcome to come and see how I learnt this little technique I'm about to apply here. Okay. So we just learned ray casting. We're going to implement some ray casting. We want to ray cast for obstacles in our path. So again, we'll bring up our MPC movement script. And we only want to avoid obstacles if we are actually moving. So we're going to modify our moving. Now currently we have a look direction. It's a directional vector. Now before we turn this into a rotation, we're going to modify this vector based on the information returned from the obstacles and the raycast. I'm going to pop it in here. I'm going to start our raycast command. And in my example, 
I actually showed the raycast when it wasn't colliding with anything. So let's just build the function first. If physics, let's build the command first, the condition. If physics raycast, and the parameters for our raycast were our origin, so it's our transform position, and the direction of our raycast. Again, we're going to be using our transform, the forward directional vector of our transform. And then we need to gather information based on the hit of that raycast. So we need to create a variable, hit, and that will be our raycast hit, where we store that information. And the final parameter for raycast was a distance. So again, let's create a public variable the distance so that it can be modified. I type float and I'm going to make this one a bit shorter. So I'm only going to make it 5. Back down to our raycast. So there we have our basic raycast. From an origin in a direction gathering hit information for a certain distance. So let's add in our debugs. Okay, so hopefully you have watched the Raycast video, so I'm just going to punch this in and you'll understand where I'm getting these commands from. Okay, so we're taking our origin and we're sending it in a direction, but we have to multiply that out by our distance. And we'll give it a colour. Okay, so there's our debug if our ray does not hit anything. So let's debug a line if we do hit something. And then we can use our hit point information from our raycast hit. So again, we're starting at an origin. And this time we're going to be using our hit. And we're going to be using the point world space of that bit hit and again a color. And I'll make this red to show that it is hitting something. Alright, let's see that in action just quickly. Let's start it up. So we see our enemy is casting a ray and indeed as soon as it hits something it does change his line to indicate that he has seen something. Okay, so what can we do with that information? We found we've hit something. What else can we find out from the hit? So we go to our raycast, and again the hit information. The second one here is the normal. The normal of the surface the ray hit. And there it is there. So what's a normal? The best way of describing it, I suppose, is in an image. Try to have a quick search for something relevant. So you can see a mesh here with all these arrows coming off it. Now these are indications of the normal of the surface. And we've got something a little bit more clear. So when we have a mesh, it usually has a face involved, and the normal is the direction that that face is facing. It's perpendicular to the flat of the mesh. I've got a bit of a better example down here. So you can see, if this was our mesh, so if our mesh was lined up this way, this is the way our normal is facing. And on the point, it's taken an even between the two faces. And on this face, that is the normal. You can see the wrong example of that. So that's what a normal is on the surface of a collider of a mesh. And this, in our case, our mesh collider. Okay, so that explains normal. So we're going to be using the ray hit normal information. We're going to be using that to modify our look direction. Okay, so we have a directional vector. We're going to modify that vector based on the ray hit and the hit surface normal. Okay, let's just add that in. So our look direction, actually before I do. Now a normal 
to get confusing even more is a normalized vector. So what does that mean? A normalized vector is a vector that returns a magnitude of 1. So this is a way of getting any kind of distance that's involved in the vector and squashing it down so it only brings you a distance of 1. So this is normalized. normalized. So I'm going to normalize our look direction first. Now we're going to modify it. We're going to add to our look direction our hit normal. And I'm going to give that a modifier because that's what was in the tutorial if you watch that. Now you did use a hard coded value of 20. I suppose you can tweak that to change how much your MPC deflects after it gets the raycast hit. So there we have it. That should be about it. We get the look direction. We cast a ray, we modify our look direction, and then we use that to calculate our rotation. So there we go. I think I could clean this up too. Just another consideration with the gravity. Um, we can maintain our y in our desired velocity to our, our rigid body dot velocity. So that way if it's falling, we're not changing it in any way. We're going to maintain that velocity there. So there's a couple of quick changes. Save that out. I'm going to check for any compilation errors. There's nothing there, so let's hit play. So we're watching the raycast. We're watching the raycast change colour as he hits the wall. And there we have it. He saw that wall. And he turned himself. There we go. So he's turned not to face the player, let's go directly across. Run around. You see how he's turned himself? And he's getting jammed up there on the walls. He does get his sides caught. So we need to do something a little bit more to that ray cast. So it's not from the center. Let's imagine casting a ray from each one of his shoulders when he does have a shoulder. So let's build that in. Okay, so we have we have our raycast that we're doing here. Let's create some variables that represent positions in relation to our transform. So we're going to cast a ray from our left ray position. It's going to be a type vector 3. This is going to equal my transform. Intelligence just does not want to work, does it? My transform position, this is the left of us, so we're going to take away our transform right. We can duplicate that out for our right shoulder. It's our right right position, this time it is in our right, so it's positive to our transform position. Okay? Now, just so in case you wanted to pull those ray casts in and out, we'll even create another variable. Oh, I was going to call it modifier, but let's call it multiplier. Let's be a type float because let's just call it 0.75 for now. So before we add or subtract our transform right. Let's just add our multiply here to modify the value. You'll see this all come together at the moment. Okay, so we're creating two new locations in relation to our transform in which to cast rays from. So there we have one ray that we're casting. bring in the other one. Now we're not casting from our transform position anymore, we're going to cast from our left shoulder and our right shoulder. Let's cast that one from the left. Let's cast this one from the right. 
And we could even do two debugs to show our shoulders when we're not colliding with anything. Draw from our right shoulder position. Okay, so there's quite a few changes in there. Let's just see what that's done to everything. Now, watching our NPC, he's not within a range of five units from any colliders to his forward. We should get the two ray cars I was talking about. And even pause it there. There we go. So that's what we've created. And the shoulder modifier variable to explain that. That is just how far from the center that is. So if I brought that down to 0.5, that would bring that ray cast right to there. You see, I've given him a little bit of a gap. I want to give him some clearance as he approaches the wall, so he doesn't bump into the wall as he's turning around to it. Now let's see if that in fact works. Let's follow that along, resume play. There we go, we can see the left shoulder turn red, so that one was hitting. Let's move our play around again. Okay, so the center of the ray cast is still coming from the center, it's not showing the shoulder it's coming from. And debug draw line, a couple more if let's change. This is now coming from left shoulder, this is coming from the right shoulder. Let's check that again. So, and our NPC comes in, now we see, yep, the left shoulder, that was the red one. That was the left shoulder again. Let's see if we can turn him around. Oh, that's the left shoulder, there we go, left shoulder. Left shoulder, now we're turning around. His right shoulder. A bit hard to see through the wall there. There we go, there's his right shoulder. You see that red line popping up? And there we have it. He's quite happily finding his way around that obstacle. Isn't that great? Okay. So. I don't think there was anything else I wanted to add into this video. So that's, yep, the NPC, some very, very basic obstacle avoidance.